Hi everyone and welcome to another out and about video and today we're in Haslingdon in my neck of the woods and we're going to go back to 1925 into October the 27th where it all begins and it's a story which is a strange one as well it is sad um, and it covers the tale of a lady an 82, 82 year old widow I should say called Mary Ann O'Shea and she lived here on what was known as Tower Hill which is this direction here now Tower Hill back in the day was a rundown hovel if you will it was the worst place you can think of to live in Haslingdon um, and we're going to get into the story of poor Mary um, and I'll tell you more about the details of what occurred on the 27th up to the 31st of October 1925 so there in the front of us there used to be a row of around 36 houses that ran from obviously right to left or left to right all across this road here and the mill to our left was known as Tower Hill Mill and it was built in 1836 but as you can see now there's nothing left of this area it's completely been redeveloped over the years and I think it was in 1935 when all these houses began to be stripped and began to be demolished now in front of here this is where the houses would have been like I said a row of 36 dwellings and you can see just like I said how steep it goes now Mary on the 27th of October 1925 she was making her way home along this street but um, she was suffering from severe rheumatism as well as um, she had an ulcer on one of her legs so walking was quite difficult for her now there was a young boy called Joseph who was 15 and he noticed her so he gave her a lift into her house and this was the last known time that she was seen alive ever again So after young Joseph has left Mary all alone, like I said, this was the last known time she was seen alive. Now, Mary used to collect a pension on a regular basis. Now, she used to go down to, obviously to collect the pension um, promptly, but she hadn't collected it at all in October, which raised some alarm, some suspicions. However, there was, a, there was another lady involved in this story called Margaret Flanagan, and she was a single lady, a lot younger than uh, Mary. And Margaret used to go into a house on a regular basis to, uh, to help her with the needs. Now we have to remember, or we have to know that Mary herself was quite cantankerous. Um, she wouldn't associate at all with any neighbors. She'd lost all her friends. And we think it's because she lost her husband two years prior in uh, 1923 and because obviously her aches and pains and what have you she just had enough she may have been well been uh, had enough of life if you will but here somewhere along here is where she used to live like i said a row of 36 houses now she only used one room and that was the basement so we're looking around about this height where probably the basement level was because like i said it's quite a steep incline and the other room was a bedroom which was obviously higher up now four days later on October the 31st Margaret had made her way to Mary's house to see if, um, if she needed anything if she needed any shopping or any other jobs doing and when she got to the house and the front door was slightly ajar she made her way in she found the body of poor Mary lying at the bottom of a set of stone steps now at the side of her were two of her cats and they were sitting at the side of her right arm. Now the thing we have to know about this story is the two cats that Mary used to have, she regarded them as pets, but they were feral. They were literally so vicious towards people, and not just other people, strangers, but also towards Mary. And they'd been known to attack, obviously, people coming into the house. They were quite vicious. So Margaret, after finding the body of Mary lying somewhere in the basement floor, somewhere in this area, she couldn't get close to Mary so she went to the local police station which was in that direction and she came across I think it was called PC Ward he was the acting superintendent at the time 
and she told him what she'd found, obviously the body of Mary at the bottom of the steps. So PC Ward made his way to, obviously, Tower Hill, where Mary lived. And he himself couldn't get into the actual building. So he had to go next door to a neighbour's house to get some ladders, and he climbed up to one of the windows in Mary's apartment. And as he climbed in the windows and he made his way down the steps, he shooed the cats outside and then he locked the door. Now what he came across was truly horrific. Um, poor Mary was lying, she was dead at the bottom of the stairs. But the cats had been slowly eating away at, obviously, her lifeless body. Partly dressed, it looked like Mary had fallen when intending to retire to her bed for the night and unable to rise, she spent her final moments lying on the cold stone floor. How long she had suffered for, no one quite knows, but on looking at Mary's body, PC Ward was shocked at the sight in front of him. Her right arm had been stripped of flesh, and fingers, shoulder, nose, cheeks, bottom jaw, tongue, front of her neck and part of her chest had been eaten away. So we're going to make our way over to Haslinden Cemetery now and hopefully find the final resting place of Mary. Uh, we know she's buried in Haslinden Cemetery, like I said, which is along Grain Road. So we're going to pop up there now. Uh, hopefully we can find where her final resting place is uh, and we'll pay our final respects to her. We are stood in the dip of Hargreaves Street and you can see for yourselves the main road at the top and just how it comes down, the steepness of it. Um, so you can understand if Mary's basement was where them gates are, the red gates, just how high up these houses would have gone. And it was at the bottom, obviously in the basement, where Mary's lifeless body was discovered. So as we make our way, hopefully, to where Mary was buried, we'll go a little bit more into the story. But yeah, when... Uh, when Mary was a younger lady, she wed at a young age to obviously her husband who was called Morris and they were both Irish origin and they came over to Liverpool, now we don't know when they relocated to Liverpool but they did, they left Ireland and they, they moved over to Liverpool. It didn't take long um, and then they ended up moving into Haslingdon where Morris got a job working for the Cooperative Society, the Haslinden Cooperative Society, as a shoemaker. I think Mary herself was then beginning to be, obviously start work in places such as the mills that were nearby. And they lived happily, obviously, together for, for many years. But um, the story goes that she also worked I think it was for General French, I think was his, uh, was his nickname or his name. And he was a high ranking officer during the Boer War. And she used to tell friends that she did have at the time, that, that to what such she did, she used to be one of his cooks. But it was in later life, uh, things began to take a bit of a turn for her. Um, like I said, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis kicked in. And like I said earlier on in the video, she uh, she ended up suffering from an ulcer on one of her legs, which restricted her movements. But she did, she became a bitter old lady towards her end. And um, she didn't have time for neighbours or friends. She lost all her friends because of the way she was. But I just think life and issues are taking its, its toll on her over the years and she just had enough. But um, the inquiry that took place, a couple of days after her body was found, they found that um, she'd suffered from, we think it was a broken neck at the bottom of the stairs and she was half dressed. So it looks like she was obviously going up to the bedroom um, and she's obviously slipped, she's fallen, she could have tripped over one of the cats, nobody quite knows. But when they found her body, like I said, she suffered from a broken neck and obviously that's, this is why she couldn't, uh, she couldn't help, her, help herself. I mean, death probably would have been instantaneous, I would have thought. But we're here now at the cemetery and we're going to look in this plot here for, for where Mary hopefully is somewhere interred and it's somewhere in this area in the A region of Haslinden Cemetery. So we think we've narrowed where Mary is lying, uh, final resting place, we think it's either here or it's in this plot here. We think it's either that one 
or it's this one. Um, but there's no headstones, there's no stone number markers, there's nothing to back that up. Um, all we can do is go off the previous numbers on that uh, headstone at the back. But yeah, we think she's either here or she's here. Mary's body was interred within the grounds of Haslenden Cemetery on the 4th of November 1925. Her grave is marked as A764. So unfortunately we've not been able to find poor Mary's final resting place. We do think it's where we showed you guys over there, but there's no definite proof because there's no headstone, there's no number markers. Um, but it's a sad tale, um, obviously a tragic end to Mary's life. But if you did enjoy this story, please don't forget to give us a like, comment down below what you feel of stories like these. Um, we'll be back soon with another tale from the past. And as always say, take care and look after yourselves.